वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर टू द स्टूडेंट एंड टू द आई सी ए आई इट इज बोथ दे आर फेवरेट As far as ICI is concerned, expect a guaranteed question on this uh, topic, basically. And as far as students are concerned, either you know transfer pricing fully or you don't know. As in, you have to do this properly and go. So, in the next whatever one, two, three hour that I am going to take with you, I will deep dive into this topic properly and ensure that you get full marks if there is a question. and the probability and the chance of a question on transfer pricing is like very very high because this is a hardcore uh, uh, you can say strategic cost management performance management chapter so that is where ici will uh, you know include these questions where transfer pricing is there and involved totally chalo on that note let's start so we are now discussing transfer pricing what exactly is transfer pricing so let me take you through the basics because obviously you are not aware of this at all am i right yes sir now remember one thing every chapter of scpm has a connection of business in it right somewhere or the other every chapter is connected to the business that we are doing be it the chapter 1 introduction to cost management be it modern business environment your lean system innovation all the or baby you know chapters like performance measurement and evaluation everywhere we will see that the business is a key aspect and so is going to be the case with transfer pricing now ideally transfer pricing is a exclusively uh, practical chapter but still we will expect mcqs and ic has also given good handsome number of mcqs for this chapter so let's try and get this chapter done and dusted in the best manner possible chalo let's start so let's get to the basics okay what did i tell you every chapter in your scpm is connected to something called as b u s i n e s s business because if business is not there then there is no need to find a cost of a product or even do the marketing yes and at times even marketing is to be done is taught in this in one of the chapters that we are going to do ahead now we are doing business for a simple purpose our logic is very clear why do we do business so i am asking you you have to tell me why do we do business so there is just one motive and that is apna sapna money money the more money we will be able to earn through the business that is what our uh, that is what our end intention is right so we are doing business in order to earn net profit okay now my next question to you what is net profit guys what is net profit well simply speaking net profit is a function of sale and cost am i right so we are doing business in business we need to earn net profit that's what we are doing business for okay now if i ask you how do you calculate net profit so you say that sir it's a simple thing we'll keep it simple i want a layman language here that's it what is net profit tell you as a layman language tell me sir it is nothing but a uh, selling price minus cost yes this is true selling price minus total cost is your net profit absolutely and trust me this calculation of selling price and calculation of total cost calculation of calculation of selling price and then calculation of total cost this is like one of the main objectives this is like one of the main objectives of a chartered and a cost accountant right there are product managers there are pricing managers just with the main aim 
of calculation of selling price and calculation of total cost so one of the objectives and if you actually open your intermediate book and find out and write down objectives of a ca or a cwa you will find to ascertain the total cost of the product to ascertain the selling price of the product okay i am going to pick up one of them for this chapter and my focus in this chapter is going to be ascertainment of selling price now your immediate reaction will be that sir if ascertainment of selling price is one of your motive is one of your motive then we can go to intermediate level there also we were taught ascertainment of selling price or or in fact there is a chapter in our book itself strategic revenue management strategic profit management in that strategic revenue management there is a concept called as calculation of selling price sir we will do it there itself well your answer is correct but the selling price nowadays is of two types and in this chapter we are going to understand one of that type of selling price sir two type of selling price can you please elaborate a little definitely so here we go the selling price is of two ways the selling price is of two types sir what are the two types the selling price well 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 one is your external selling price sir the selling price will obviously be external only because that's where we are going to sell the product and my answer is the second answer and that is the real crux of that chapter which is to calculate the internal selling price so one we have the calculation of external selling price which is also called as the market price and the other is calculation of internal selling price yes you heard that right sir how do we sell goods internally well how do we do it and why do we do it is now what i will be explaining it to you i am sure your mind is now running towards it but this calculation of internal trans uh, internal selling price is called as transfer price is called as transfer price now sir why will we sell any goods internally let's take an example and the best example that i can bring to you is amul the taste of india just imagine that you have a factory of amul okay tell me what does amul do can i say that sir amul produces milk and sends it everywhere i'm sure you have heard of amul right so it, it originated from gujarat and it sells milk to the outside market correct now this is where the real game begins amul also has so this is milk division amul there is a amul milk division what does this milk division do produce the milk this amul milk division also amul also has something called as a curd division because it also sells curds are we understanding does amul also sell curd give me a an answer yes or no right so see here we can see that we have amul milk also can we see the amul milk yes can we see the masti dahi which is also called as amul curd right both are amul's flagship products here amul is written here in this masti dahi and then amul is written here in this milk yes sir absolutely now my the whole point of showing this to you is what do we make the curd from what do we make the curd from can i say curd is made from milk hello curd is made of milk the answer is yes tell me where will this curd division take the milk from sir but obvious the curd division will take the milk from our own milk division from our own milk division but obvious yes or no yes sir so when the curd department 
calls the milk department and tells them hey milk department i need some milk in order to make convert it into curd milk department will be like how many milk are i need 100 tons of milk so will this 100 tons of milk be sent to curd division free of cost no sir variable cost maybe sir total cost don't know sir market price we'll have to think sir and exactly this is why we have this chapter because 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 when there is a transfer of any product or services from one division of a main entity to another division of another main entity then the price to be charged the price to be charged by the transferer division to the transferee division ladies and gentlemen is called as transfer pricing transfer pricing transfer pricing transfer pricing are we understanding mm -hmm. uh -huh. got it guys so 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 we write here transfer of goods and services right right by whom by whom by the transferer department to the transferee department by the transferer department of a company to the transferee department of the same company it is called as the price at which it is called transferred is called as the name of the chapter transfer price am i clear guys yes so so there is a transfer of goods and services that's not a big deal but the price to be charged price to be charged by transferer department to transfer e department is called yes 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 transfer price is called transfer price okay price to be charged by transfer department obviously of the same company to transfer department of the same company it is called as the transfer price clear any doubts so let's make it clear again here what is a transfer price what is a transfer price this is called as a transfer price so there is a there is a transferer and there is a transferee okay and there is transfer of goods or services or it could be anything else right this price charged between internal transfer this is the word that i wanted to tell you all because this was the word that was kind of running behind your head right so this internal price basically is your transfer price transfer price price charged between internal transfer of divisions is called hello is called transfer price gotcha done next let's write down the example so that when we you know just refer this again we are able to remember it let's write down the examples first can i say milk division transferring milk to curd division of amul okay curd division transferring curd to buttermilk division of amul what is buttermilk made of curd so that will also be internal transfer subject to internal pricing chalo let's take a ca example 
we all know the big fours right so the big fours have so many departments let's take an example of a kpmg a kpmg uh, statutory audit to team and there is a kpmg income tax department team so there could be a chances that the kpmg statutory team dip team would require some services from the kpmg income tax team is that possible the answer is yes so if there is that service transfer also it is also a you know there is going to be a service charge which is going to be levied called as the transfer price i hope we are clear with these three examples and now what is the word transfer price we are aware now the next question how do you calculate it the second part that you may think of that sir we can calculate it on cost we can calculate it on market price it could be either of the ways there are many you know ways to calculate it how are we going to do it is all a part of the story that is going to follow so first quickly let's write down the examples that we have just discussed transferer and then there is transfer e okay then there is amun there is amul in amul there is a milk division which transfers milk to the curd division at a price called as the transfer price okay 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 sir got it next another just in continuation we may write down card division transfer card to buttermilk division at a price called as the transfer price and let's take a ca wala example a kpmg tax division may transfer services to kpmg stat audit division at a price called as the transfer price chal then now the next step that you want to know so first step that you wanted to know is what is a transfer price sir you know what is a transfer price so when internal division transfers happen the price at which the goods are or services are transferred and this is a very regular feature then in that case whatever charge is being taken by the transfer division from the transfer division is ladies and gentlemen called as the transfer price are we aware of this now clear are we clear with this thing the answer is yes now let's go to the next level of the concept now before i go to directly the concept of what how or how the transfer price is calculated i will want you to take a bit backward towards the history of transfer pricing are you okay with that are you comfortable the answer is yes because you should know where all of this is originating you know current transfers are based on market price but it is not always it is not always been the case previously it used to be on cost then it is now on transfer it is based on market price why was previously it on cost now why is it on market price today also there are few firms where the transfer is still on cost why you will come to know once i tell you the history and today also the transfers are on market price why in what cases is what now we are going to discuss so you should know the uh, why of what we are doing this chapter and in order to understand the why a little back word is what we will have to go i will tell you the history i'll not take much time i know your time is very much important but you know a base setting let us little dig deep into the roots 
get our concepts very clear so that we don't have to bother anything as regards uh, concept is concerned. Chalo, let's start guys. History of transfer pricing. History of TP. Now, before 1995, the transfer pricing was on a different level altogether. After 1995, the chapter transfer pricing was introduced in the scenario throughout the world and that's where it has taken more traction. Why so? Why is it that before 1995, there was, at least in India I can say, there was no uh, transfer pricing at all. So that, let's divide it. One, we will call it as the pre-1995 era and the other we will call as the post-1995 era. Okay. Now, as far as the pre-1995 era is concerned, there the organizational structure used to be a centralized organization structure. So now, because we have done performance management, we know that there are two types of organizational structures. One is a centralized organization structure. What is a centralized organization structure? Where the decision is taken only by the top management. Where there is not much expansion which has taken place. So there is just one main owner who is there and that owner manages everything kind of a thing. So when that was the scenario, at that point in time, there was no concept of transfer price and all the goods by default were transfer at cost from one division to the other. So there was no need of a chartered accountant to, you know, get into the nitty gritties of the working of transfer price at all. But what changed after 1995? After 1995, the delegation started. The businesses started expanding. Businesses realized that it is not going to be possible that we are going to expand without delegation of authority and responsibility. So people started delegating their work and once delegation happened, the centralized organization converted itself into a decentralized organization. Now in a decentralized organization, there are various divisions. There are various divisions. And all those divisions are responsible for their own profitability. So again, once there is decentralization, there are different divisions and departments. These divisions, take care of this, or please listen this properly. These divisions are responsible for their own profitability. Hence, these divisions are called as profit centers. I had given you all an um, uh, example of Ambani's. So there is a Mukesh Ambani, he has decentralized his business. He has given Reliance Geo to Akash Ambani, he has given Reliance Industries Limited to uh, uh, Anant Ambani, he has given Reliance Retail Ventures to Isha Ambani. Are we clear everyone? Same way, say for example Tata's, there is a Tata Motors division, there is a Tata Steel, there is a Tata Power, there is a TCS. All are different divisions of the main head company Tata Sons. Now, if Tata Motors requires Tata Steel, at what price should Tata Steel transfer to Tata Motors? Now, logically, if you see that they, every division is responsible for its own profit. Every division wants that my division's profit should be high. Because nowadays, nowadays, the, you know, divisions are given bonus based on profit. We have already done the concept of return on investment. Do you remember in return on investment concept, what did we learn? That the if there is a benchmark, say 12%, beyond 12%, if any division is earning, it will get special bonus. So here also, if there is a, you know, any division is there, that division needs a particular amount of profitability, return on investment of that particular division. So when the transfer takes place, it will not happen at cost. Because if it is happening at cost to cost, then in that case, that division is not earning any profit, which will lower down its overall return on investment. And that is where the whole concept of transfer pricing was introduced, which told that let's keep a price between the divisions in such a way that both the divisions have a win-win situation. Because the transferer is also a profit center division. The transferee 
is also a profit center division and both of them want to increase their roi both of them want to increase their profitability but guys how is that going to happen so for that we need a pricing methodology which is beneficial to both the transferer and transferee and that's where the role of chartered accountant was introduced because now calculating transfer pricing is very important as both divisions want maximum profits from the purchase or the sale and how do you calculate that interim price or transfer price which makes a win-win situation for both of them is now what we are going to understand. But previously that was not the scenario because the internal divisions were not at all concerned with any profitability of their internal divisions because everything was centrally controlled. Your salary or bonus was not dependent on your division's ROI. Are you understanding or not? So guys, are we going to take it forward now? Yes? Sure. So in short, first, so I was just giving you a brief. We'll just dictate that also because when you are revising, you should know all of that. So let's start. Previously, before 1995, it was more of a centralized organization structure. So centralized system of organization, okay. So because of that, what happened? Decision making was at the top authority. So as a result of this, the decision making only with the top authority. only with the top authority and therefore in pre-1995 era internal transfers used to happen but they were at cost and hence no chartered accountant required so internal internal transfer was at cost only so limited scope of ca but now with the post 1995 era can i say decentralization departmentalization has happened as a result the new divisions the departments are the profit centers and these profit centers are responsible for the profit of their divisions because they are going to get a bonus, a variable incentive. And so the transferer division wants to transfer the goods and services at the highest possible price. The transferee division wants to purchase at the lowest possible price. Yes, that negotiation, that made that whole thing is what now we are going to discuss where transfer price is going to play such an important role. So post. 1995 there is going to be a decentralized slash departmental setup right what how does thing change here because now in a decentralized departmentalized setup, the divisions are profit centric. The divisions are profit centric. So again, there are centralized systems. Salary is fixed. Your salary is fixed in nature. Fixed salary, fixed salary, salary is equal to fixed salary so if the salary is fixed doesn't matter at all for them that you know yeah so all of this is very cost centric now if my salary is fixed doesn't matter to me at whatever price the uh, you know goods and services are being transferred but things changed when post 95 when the decentralization was started so 
after decentralization things changed and and what happened profit centric system started so there were profit centers let's call this as a profit center right and in case of profit centers the divisions get bonus plus sorry salary plus bonus and this bonus is based on roi return on investment so in order to gain a higher return i will not transfer anything at cost i will transfer everything at the maximum transfer price possible got it so now suppose here if we are in a 2025 era so here in today's scenario in today's current scenario in today's current today's current scenario what is going to happen we will see which or type of organization is it is it a centralized organization or is it a decentralized profit centric organization the moment it is profit central organization we know that role of a chartered accountant is going to be there and internal transfer is not going to be at cost it will be at a transfer price ha it's a different matter that transfer in such cases may be at cost also in some situations so that transfer price becomes at cost but basically the concept of transfer pricing will be used meaning internal transfers will be at a price which is a selling price acceptable to both divisions and at the same time calculated by a chartered accountant so suppose if there are two firms a limited b limited if the a limited is having a centralized structure as such then we will say that internal transfer hello internal transfer will be at cost may be no concept of transfer price but 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 b limited majority of organizations today are like b limited which are centralized which are in a decentralized organization where there is profit center divisions responsibility centers the internal transfer will always be at cost at cost and whenever uh, sorry <laughs> sorry sorry internal transfer will be at transfer price and whenever internal trans is at transfer price you need a chartered accountant dan 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 are we clear with this whole concept so far because now we are going to start with the real transfer pricing so in a short suppose if i have a hmm, suppose if there is a centralized organization structure at amul we will continue with our example of amul okay guys so suppose if there is a centralized organization structure at amul then what will happen centralized structure at amul then in that case what will happen suppose there is a milk division will transfer to curd division will transfer to butter milk division okay now what is the production capacity tell me so the production capacity is 1 lakh liters let's take an example now curd department gives me a call curd department gives me a call and tells me hey milk department i need 20000 liters of milk okay so milk department is transferring to curd department what 
ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड लीटर्स ऑफ मिल्क बट बिकॉज इट इज अ सेंट्रलाइज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ट्रांसफर इज एट कॉस्ट फुल स्टॉप द मिल्क डिपार्टमेंट इज नॉट एट ऑल मोटिवेटेड to transfer it is at anything about cost because is like how does it bother me i don't care that's the mm -hmm. attitude and when the curd department transfers to buttermilk department hello when the curd department transfers to buttermilk department and suppose 10000 liters of curd is required again the transfer is at cost and you don't need a chartered accountant but 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 now let's change the system let's change our example let's change the system let's change our example to a decentralized profit centric approach to a decentralized organization and today scenario let me tell you all organizations are decentralized and all are based on profit centers because everybody wants to expand everybody wants to be competitive as such right now if this happens then there are going to be three scenarios those three scenarios now i am going to explain it to you full everything each and every single word will be logically clear to you because first i will give you an example from that example we will connect to the concepts and everything will be set in your head and once you are clear with that nobody can touch you as far as this chapter is concerned and i'm sure this will become one of your favorite chapters as well chalo so on that note let us start guys with our first case so there are as i told you three cases which we are going to tackle so whenever there is going to be a profit center we will apply the concept of tp tp is transfer pricing and in such scenarios there will be only three cases no other case possible at all whatsoever first case is called as full spare capacity first case is called as full spare capacity uh, second case full spare capacity for idle capacity second case part spare part idle capacity and the third case fully occupied capacity fully occupied capacity so these are the three concepts that we should know that we should apply and if these things are done then you can say your transfer pricing is done chalo let's start first case case 1 what is the case 1 yes it is full spare capacity it is full spare capacity can i write the word spare as idle also full idle capacity okay chalo now we have as usual uh, two divisions one is the transferer one is the transferee in amul milk is called as the transferer division curd is called as the transferee division i hope we are clear with this bifurcation now let's start with our example so first is the amul milk division amul milk division which is nothing but my transferer division okay okay sir and the other is the amul curd division which is nothing but my transferee division okay so so now i am going to start with the example the example will be very crystal clear to you once it is done but for that i need your full focus look into my eyes 100% focus 
is what I want from you all. If you are able to give that, I assure you, you will become a champion of this particular concept and chapter. Okay. So thinking anything else, any of anybody else, no, only me, my, myself. Let's start. Just keep on following my example and you will follow the concept as well. Okay. So now the transfer division, which is the Amul milk division has a production capacity of uh, 1 lakh liters of milk. So here we have production capacity one lakh liters of milk. Okay. Okay. So it will be better if you also keep on writing with me. And when I explain the concept, just focus. I'll tell you. Next. For this production capacity of 1 lakh, the Amul milk division has a demand of the Amul milk division has a external demand or what you call as the market demand of 80,000 liters of so market demand what we call as the external demand what we call as the external demand the market demand how much is the market demand? It is 80,000 liters. Okay, sir. Done. Please, can you tell me looking at the question, how much is the spare capacity of this milk division? Do you understand what is a spare capacity? Spare capacity means the total production capacity is 1 lakh. But our market demand is 80,000. So we will be producing only up to 80,000 units because that's what we will be able to sell. So that leaves us with a spare capacity or idle capacity of correct 20,000 liters. So we will write here spare slash idle capacity 20,000 liters. So done. Okay, now, <coughs> how did we get this 20,000? So, we will write here, we had a capacity of 1 lakh liters, of which 80,000 liters are to be sold in the market. Now, this is the scenario and the Amul curd division gives a call to the milk division. Amul curd division calls milk division and calls and tells, Hey, milk division, I need 20,000 liters of milk for making curd in my division. So, what is the ask of the curd division? They need 20,000 liters of milk. They need 20,000 liters of milk. Fair enough? Done? Done. Now, both of them, milk division and the curd division, both are profit-centric divisions. Both are profit-centric divisions. By default, by default, the concept of transfer pricing will apply only when they are profit-centric divisions. Now, you tell me, as a chartered accountant, now we have to decide, as a chartered accountant, we have to decide what should be its minimum transfer price and what should be its maximum transfer price. Gotcha? Shall we start? Sure. So let's start on that note. What will we keep the minimum and maximum transfer price logically? Okay. Logically, we have to find that. Okay. One more additional information that I should give you is, uh, let me try to fit in here. Let me try to fit in here that 
I will be able to fit in here. Okay. Additional information. The very important additional information is what I am going to give you. Very, very important additional information. Okay. And that additional information is that the market price, the market price of milk is rupees 100 per liter and the cost of milk, uh, we will say this variable cost of milk is rupees 80 per liter. This is a additional information. Let's highlight this. Okay. This is the total information that is available to you. Now you are called as a chartered accountant to decide which, what should be the minimum transfer price and maximum transfer price. Come on chartered, let's get started. So we are the chartered accountant of this Amul company. and We will calculate the transfer price. So we have to, what is our role? to calculate range of transfer price for internal transfer for internal transfer okay sure let's start So, see, your role as chartered accountant is always to calculate the range. So, when you have to calculate a range, what is going to be the range? What should be the minimum transfer price that has to be recovered? And what is the maximum transfer price that can be charged? That basically is called as a range and that's what we are going to calculate. First thing that we need to calculate is the minimum transfer price. Is the minimum transfer price. And just to give you a context, Minimum transfer price means the minimum amount that we will recover from the transferee division. That is called as the minimum transfer price. So, if, if you want, I can dictate this to you. Minimum transfer price is the minimum recovery to be done by transferor division by transferor division from transferee division such that there is that there is no loss to transferor division minimum that much has to be recovered okay and then what will be the maximum transfer price then max transfer price means maximum it is the maximum recovery from transferor to transferee usually usually huh? minimum transfer price is from the angle of transferor and maximum transfer price is from the angle of transferee how does this apply i'll tell you don't worry usually minimum transfer price is from transferor angle and maximum transfer price is from transfer angle all right chalo now with this context in mind let's try and calculate the minimum transfer price tell me what is the minimum transfer price that uh, you know, come what may, milk division will recover from the curd division. Can I say the recovery of the variable cost? Irrespective whether it is selling to curd division or to anywhere in the world. 
80 rupees is going to be the cost that is going to be incurred by the milk division which is the minimum that it has to recover from the curd division that becomes your minimum transfer price from the angle of transfer what 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 so minimum transfer price is what it will be recovery of that variable cost recovery of variable cost am i right everybody right done done so see 1 lakh is the production capacity 80000 is the external demand for the additional 20000 which are any which case spare even if it is to be transferred to the curd division milk division will specifically will have to produce 20000 liters and that 20000 liters will be produced at a minimum cost of 80 rupees that has to be recorded that becomes my minimum transfer price in this case any doubts any questions no sir done got it so tp i'll write down tp transfer price is equal to variable cost is equal to rupees 80 per done sir now what should be the maximum transfer price ah ha this is going to be interesting what should could be the maximum transfer price that can be charged tell me can i say that transfer he will not give anything beyond 800 rupees or even transferer will not charge anything beyond 100 rupees so the transfer he will say okay maximum i am ready to pay 100 rupees to you maximum i am ready to pay 100 rupees to you so maximum transfer price very easy will be the market price will you charge more than the market price obviously not max ha huh? max how much you will charge 100 rupees wow sir this is so easy exactly who said it is difficult so the max transfer price ladies and gentlemen will be so we will write max transfer price will be what it will be market price which is rupees 100 so transfer price is equal to market price is equal to 100 per unit or per liter as was the case in our scenario clear now what is the learning what is the learning from this or what is the learnings from the case one what concept did we understand that when there is full spare slash idle capacity we can have two prices one minimum transfer price which will be recovery of variable cost here but obvious this is the minimum that we are going to charge this is the minimum that we are going to charge this will be rupees 80 per liter and the second is going to be the max transfer price tell me how much will that be that will be maximum will be market price which will be rupees 100 per liter all is well all is well clear till here done now the level will increase and that's what we also want we are not afraid of the level increasing sir chalo so let's come to case 2 let's come to case 2 what is going to be the case 2 case 2 is going to be see this part occupied part spare part spare part idle capacity no no part spare part occupied capacity okay chalo let's write up part spare part occupied capacity done 
चल लेट स्टार्ट अगेन एग्जाम्पल विल बी अमूल द टेस्ट ऑफ इंडिया मिल्क डिविजन कर डिविजन लेट स्टार्ट Here we write the milk division with a small twist now, which is going to come. Milk division, production capacity, one lakh, one lakh liters. Now here the external demand changes to ninety thousand liters. So here we will write down external demand. Ninety thousand liters. Now immediately the mind should tell you what, what how much is the spare capacity or what we call as the idle capacity, guys? How much is the spare capacity? Can I say ten thousand units here as such? Write it down. Spare capacity ten thousand liters. Just information. Okay, as usual. Selling price per liter is still rupees hundred. Variable cost per liter is still rupees eighty. And now we come to the curd division. Now, what about the curd division? Can I say curd division? Again, calls us the milk division and tells we need a internal demand of. Twenty thousand liters. Twenty thousand liters. See now why this is called as part spare, part occupied because because curd division needs twenty thousand liters. Of that, milk division will say ten thousand. I have idle or spare, but the remaining ten thousand liters. the remaining 10000 liters is what i will have to give you from my occupied capacity i can give it to you but that is what i am going to give you from my occupied capacity i will have to sacrifice my external demand and give it to you are you understanding guys now as usual the first thing that we are going to do is calculation of minimum transfer price first thing that we are going to do is calculation of minimum transfer price chalo let's start now here what is my internal demand tell me what is my internal demand can i say it is 20000 liters yes sir okay How much spare capacity do I have? Twenty thousand liters is my internal demand. How much spare capacity do I have? Out of the twenty thousand liters, I have a spare slash idle capacity of ten thousand liters, and I have a. external demand of 10000 liters now if my internal department needs this 10000 liters i will have to sacrifice the external demand sacrifice the external demand right the this 10000 is spare so here i don't have to sacrifice anything But that ten thousand, I will have to sacrifice the external demand. Correct. Now that is where the concept of transfer pricing again will come. For this ten thousand liters, how much minimum should I charge? Can I say I will charge at least the variable cost because that is the cost that I am going to incur. So here, for this ten thousand liters, I will charge a variable cost of rupees eighty. per liter a variable cost of rupees 80 per liter but are for sure i will charge this much are yes or no yes sir so can i say your rupees 8 lakh for this 10000 liters correct but 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 what about this 10000 liters which i am going to sacrifice so now i will tell the 
कर्ड डिविजन आई एम द मिल्क डिविजन यू आर द कर्ड डिविजन आई विल टेल यू हेलो कर्ड डिविजन दिस टेन थाउजेंड लीटर्स विच इज स्पेयर इज स्पेयर दिट्स आइडल सो आई कैन गिव दैट टू यू एट एट्टी रुपीज विच इज माई वेरिएबल कॉस्ट फेयर इन अफ बट द एडिशनल टेन थाउजेंड लीटर्स आई विल हैव टू सेक्रीफाइस माई मार्केट डिमांड एंड सी आई एम अ प्रॉफिट सेंटर If I am sacrificing my market demand, I expect you to pay me the same amount which otherwise I would have got from the market. So please, for this ten thousand liters, give me the market price that is available in the market. I am ready to give you those additional ten thousand liters also, but I should not lose anything. See, eventually I am a profit center. As a profit center, I have to take care of the ROI of my division because all my uh, employees are also there. They are also, you know, expecting a bonus. so for the 10000 liters which are spare fair i'll give you at variable cost but you also understand no for the external demand please give me my market price i am happy to give that to you even the internal team which is the core division will be like fair point fair point no that okay uh, yeah that is the sacrifice that you are doing so for that we will pay you the market price so for the sacrifice of the external demand i am ready to pay you the market price or the selling price which is rupees 100 per liter which is rupees 10 lakhs which is rupees 10 lakhs and therefore my minimum transfer price will be therefore my minimum transfer price will be rupees 18 lakh for 20000 liters and that will work out to rupees 90 per liter that will work out to rupees 90 per liter a hey, something to do everybody are you understanding guys please confirm gotcha yes cool 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 logical fair so 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 again here what will be the minimum transfer price what is the logic now so minimum transfer price in case of a part spare part occupied part spare part occupied what will be the minimum transfer price we will say that for the spare part for the spare units at the rate variable cost per unit plus for the occupied units at the rate market price per unit the whole divide by total number of units to be transferred and that is my average transfer price Hey, Sanjay Guru, watch out, everybody. Guys, are we clear? Important concept. I hope we are done. Now, what about the maximum transfer price? Maximum transfer price is relatively easy, no? Here, what will be the maximum transfer price? Again, he will say that maximum that I am ready to pay you is the market price. and see even in this minimum transfer price the final transfer price works out to 90 per liter which is still okay for the curd division if this same curd division goes outside and purchases then it will be 100 rupees here at least it is giving at 90 getting at 90 per liter so that is still okay that is still better yeah right so overall we will say that this is the minimum transfer price for the spare unit we'll pay variable cost for the occupied units market price total divided by the total number of units internally transferred we'll get the average transfer price which is the minimum transfer price for the maximum transfer price we will say that transfer price again is equal to your market price 
is equal to your market price or what we call as the selling price which is correct which is as a matter of fact rupees 100 per liter any doubts anybody no we are done now we come to case 3 so what is the uh, learning can i say minimum transfer price this is the learning we will say this is the learning right minimum transfer price is the learning maximum transfer price this is the learning for case 2 now starts case 3 now no prices for guessing what is going to be part of case 3 correct can i say it is fully occupied or zero spare fully spare is done part occupied part spare is done correct. now it is going to be fully occupied or what we call as the zero spare so let's start same to same thing with an example we have the milk division we have the curd division for the milk division we have a production capacity 1 lakh liters external demand now this is going to become interesting any guesses what is going to be the external demand full full 1 lakh liters is the external demand okay. now uh, same so now as soon as we see the external demand we realize that there is spare capacity how much how much is the spare capacity zero same selling price which is the market price is rupees 100 variable cost is rupees 80 curd let's see what is the curd division so curd division internal demand is 20,000 liters done 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 so now we will start what we have to calculate we have to calculate the range of transfer price. I am sure now you yourself are smart enough to calculate what is going to be the range. So here now my range is going to be minimum transfer price, maximum transfer price. Can I say now everything is to be given from my external demand. Full sacrifice is from external demand. Whenever sacrifice is from external demand sacrifice the external demand whenever sacrifice is from external demand the transfer price is going to be the market price so here we will say since since the transferer division is fully occupied the transfer to internal division is totally going to be the transfer is totally going to be out of occupied units that is full sacrifice right and in case of full sacrifice And in 
केस ऑफ सेक्रीफाइस द ट्रांसफर विल बी एट मार्केट प्राइस करेक्ट सो आई थिंक प्रीडी मच इजियर फॉर अस सो द रेंज विल बी मिनिमम ट्रांसफर प्राइस एट द रेट मार्केट प्राइस मैक्सिमम ट्रांसफर प्राइस एट द रेट मार्केट प्राइस बाई डिफॉल्ट मैक्सिमम तो हाउ मच वी आर गोइंग टू चार्ज बाई डिफॉल्ट वी आर गोइंग टू चार्ज द मार्केट प्राइस ओनली बट ऑफ यू सो दैट्स गोइंग टू बी द मैक्सिमम ट्रांसफर प्राइस विच इज हंड्रेड पर लीटर इन बोथ द केस राइट सो मैक्सिमम इज वेरी मच इजी सो कैन आई से वॉट इज द लर्निंग यूर what is the learning from case 3 that if it is fully occupied minimum tp maximum tp both at market price both at market price wow 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 wow, wow. so are we clear any questions anybody till here suppose now if i tell you there is a company having decentralized profit centers and there is a internal transfer we will use the concept of transfer price and it will fall under any of the three cases case 1 was fully spare or fully idle in case of a fully spare or fully idle capacity what is going to be the range of transfer price bolo bolo chal chal tell me what is going to be the minimum transfer price recovery of variable cost and what is going to be the maximum transfer price market price yay this is going to be the range they will ask you to calculate a range done okay what is the second part case 2 guys any doubts please let me know because this is the base setting if any doubts here then in that case you know we'll have to revisit understand again if not we are good to go then comes your second case which is part spare plus part occupy chalo let's say again minimum transfer price will be we will say the spare units at variable cost per unit occupied at market price per unit total divided by total units to be transferred internally and the max transfer price correct max transfer price will be market price and case 3 no prices for guessing it is if it is fully occupied then minimum transfer price maximum transfer price both at market price hey 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 sanjeev guru everybody any questions any doubts yes so i think uh, so far so good right now my mind is saying let's continue but my heart knows that we should not because otherwise it will become uh, too much for you guys so tell me what should we do so we listen to our heart always 
so time for me to say hasta la vista next session we will you know increase the level more and trust me it's going to be a very very fantastic session next want to keep it light the first session because otherwise you know don't want you to get too overburdened in the first lecture and then things may not go as per plan uh, for this chapter so here we are on a good note time for me to say hasta la vista on a positive note and let's meet in the next session with the advanced level of transfer pricing let's begin soon in the next session please ensure that you are writing the notes specially for this chapter because the more you write for this chapter better it will be because it will give you a good understanding on that positive note with that assumption that you understood everything so far whatever has been done take care keep smiling yes hasta la vista bye bye